for the today's uh, discussion i would like to make uh, some changes because the entire day we will be discussing on two modules one is on uh, the uh, workshop of uh, design thinking and the other one is the design thinking for strategic innovation so i would like to uh, make some changes and uh, reverse the entire sequence we will first look into the uh, all the phases of uh, the design thinking that is in workshop mode how the students will be taken through the uh, journey of uh, design thinking principles and uh, uh, at the end we will bring in the uh, design thinking approach towards the uh, strategic innovation uh, that's how the, it, it gets uh, connected so i thought of making some changes uh, hope it is acceptable to everyone and uh, uh, since we are talking about conducting or taking uh, students through the entire journey of design thinking in a workshop mode uh, let us you know set the flow for it so if at all i want to conduct this as an and and uh, the workshop then then naturally uh, initially i need to set the context that is the uh, objectives and here one one important thing which i need to maybe nail it uh, into the minds of the students is the power of empathy because everything would be centered on the empathy as this design thinking uh, uh, is uh, human centered so all that i do i'll be keeping the the uh, human element at the core and then understand their pain points and then analyze and come out with the solution which would be addressing their need okay so uh, power of empathy is very essential that i need to make it very clear to the students how exactly the power would you know empathy would work and why it is necessary for us to build that or uh, activate that uh, quality which is there within us and followed by that we have to speak about innovation innovators and the concept of innovation so that is we need to take lot of examples lot of uh, examples on innovation and also uh, innovators through those examples we can show them how the innovation is happening in in the area of uh, social space in the area of uh, other other areas so uh, design thinking principles then we must take up uh, in detail the process of design thinking that is uh, uh, since we are uh, discussing using the stanford uh, model then naturally it will have five five steps so that is empathy define ideate prototype test and implement okay then we will take uh, the uh, phases one by one empathy and then define Uh, idea to prototype test and implement and uh, of course uh, we can close the uh, workshop by uh, taking the feedback from the students and reflections uh, from the students uh, we can close it okay so uh, this would be the agenda when i really take the, the uh, students through the workshop more now to continue our journey we need to now set the context so the, to set the context let us again let us relook in fact the other day we have seen these objectives but uh, to to go in one particular sequence some of the things what we discussed on the 28th session on module 1 may get repeated uh, but the in, in in the flow they are essential so that has been taken so let us again relook at the course objectives defined in the syllabus prescribed by uh, the uh, vto there they say that it is to explain the concept of design thinking for product and service development uh, and to explain the fundamental concepts of innovation and design thinking to discuss the methods of implementing design thinking in the real world so i have i have just redefined them in this form yes so we are here definitely to build the, or activate the capacity of the students of problem solving problem solving we can able to see that or realize that 
only by by addressing the unmet needs through the design thinking principle that is the first one and the second is in support of the first one if, if at all the students need to activate their problem solving skills then naturally their mind should be set with the particular preparation and filled with the curiosity so these two things should happen so they they have to have the mindset proper mindset to take up the journey of understanding or identifying the challenges around us by igniting the curiosity so that they can see the problems as opportunities see curiosity is one thing which would definitely help the students to look into the problems but for engineers we do not have any problems they are all opportunities for us that is clearly defined here and in, in complementing the second one i need to transform students perspective perspective towards what on the world around them by enabling them to identify areas right for innovation so these are the, the three objectives uh, which we must keep it in our mind when we really take the students through the journey of design thinking so this is possible we can realize these objectives only by making students to take up a small field project and apply the principles right so here i would like to really take a pause for a few minutes or maybe one or two minutes and if somebody has anything to share here through the chat box on on a, a you know, immediate basis we can just look into the inputs otherwise we can continue so 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 there are no no uh, points mentioned in the chat box let us continue now further so with this uh, we can set our focus now for the entire discussion or for this course right so this entire course is focusing on facilitating the students to understand that engineering is all about bringing positive change see this is the, the very uh, nicely said that you know engineering is all about bringing positive change and that is possible only when we immerse the students into the world of innovation through systematic process of tackling societal problems and provide user centric solutions when i say user centric solution it's possible when we use design thinking principles so this now this focus sets us a scope for uh, the entire uh, you know learning process of the students this particular course innovation and design thinking will be working within the scope set through this focus so this is let me repeat once again we are facilitating the students to understand that engineering is all about bringing positive change and that is possible when they immerse themselves into the world of innovation through what through process systematic process of tackling the social problems i would say societal problems or else we can say design challenges using user centric approach or design thinking principles so now the objectives are clear the focus is set now we can really tell them that it is that engineers who would create something that is not available that means the innovation is uh, the uh, main you know, uh, responsibility of the engineers to uh, bring in so that they can really create ideal society on the world canvas that is possible so we can really encourage students by uh, taking them through this understanding and further we need to look into these challenges yes last time also we discussed these are the challenges we have when we take this course to the first year students they are you know having a varied demographic backgrounds we need to address that and uh, certain uh, concepts and terminologies are very new to them so carefully we must transfer that knowledge 
uh, onto them. And most important is what we teach today should become a strong or form a strong foundation for their future engagement. Why I'm repeatedly saying this is that in the first year level, whatever we teach would definitely form a strong foundation. I, I have my own experience in our university that when we first time introduced, uh, you know, in 2009-10, the course on social innovation, uh, and uh, we uh, made them to, you know, really use the uh, basic concept of uh, the uh, human-centric approach, and uh, they were selected in a team. They they choose. Uh, they used to choose a social problem to work on and then give the solution. You believe it or not, uh, we ourselves uh, were surprised when we started looking into the, the uh, kind of a projects they selected in their higher semesters, right? That really uh, made us to feel how that uh, the course at the first year level has impacted their mind. The kind of a project they selected in their higher semesters were really, you know, sensible and meaningful because of the seed that was sowed in, in the first year through that particular course. So that's why we should be very careful in, in designing this course, the content or the pedagogical content uh, to the students uh, with a lot of care and so that we can really uh, develop a designer mindset in them to look at the surroundings uh, for opportunities. And one more challenge here is all the time throughout the course, we must keep them engaged. That's the, the one, one of the critical aspects so these are some of the challenges we should really keep at the back of our mind when we start delivering this course to the first year students. Okay, let us again start as usual with, with the uh, you know, story because we need to uh, emphasize on empathy. We must make it uh, very clear that uh, empathy, uh, the power of empathy is all about, you know, the core of uh, this entire uh, journey, what we are now taking, that is about the design thinking to solve the challenges or the social challenges, empathy is one tool, a powerful tool, which should get activated in the minds of the students. So let us start with a small story. So here, the story goes like this, a boy uh, who was uh, uh, you know, visually impaired, uh, used to sit at the side of the road with a hat in front of him with a board written that I'm blind, please help. So every day he used to sit there and then uh, people passing through used to help him with uh, the money. And uh, at the end of the day, he used to collect and then take care of his day-to-day uh, -day requirements. So this used to happen on a daily basis. One, one fine day, uh, there was a person passing through that particular street, could see this boy and uh, could notice that in his hat, only few coins were there. This is... I'm just trying to now emphasize the empathy started working here. That man observed it. So initially he got connected with some situation, right? And initially it was sympathy, but it converted into uh, or activated the empathetical uh, feelings. So then he, what he did is he observed there for some times and he took the sign and chain what is written on that and he put it back on its in its place and then went so it, it worked like a miracle soon the the hat started filling people started giving more donating more helping that boy you know and in by afternoon uh, evening the, the boy was very happy with a lot of money being collected and uh, the the man who had shown the empathy or empathetical uh, support to the boy wanted to see how his uh, this thing has really worked the idea has really worked so he came back to see the situation there and uh, boy could make out that this is a man who had made some changes in the morning so he asked him sir you are the one who did that uh, change so what exactly you wrote on the board what is the change you made? And then the man said politely that I only wrote the truth. So empathetically, I could understand your pain points. This is a very important thing. You know, 
So that's empathetically understanding the pain points of the boy and other person, putting ourselves in the shoes of the other person. And here, that's what exactly happened. The man understood his pain points and he changed the board by writing that today is a beautiful day. I cannot see it. Right? And that worked like a miracle. And people started understanding the pain points of the student. Earlier it was, it is, I'm blind, please help me. It's a straightforward request. People did not accept it. But when it was written, the truth was really shown to the world that I, 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 today is a beautiful day and God has not been kind enough to give me the power of vision so I cannot see it. So he did not ask here to help. He just only narrated the status and he started getting a lot of help. So this is the power of empathy. It is exactly the power of empathy which you should understand. And this is a very classic example or a classic story which can make us or make students to understand that empathy is everything. So here at this point of time, we are completing the context setting for the entire journey. So what should happen here is we need to consolidate our, our understanding Two things are very important to uh, take the students into this course and complete the journey by uh, taking a small project at the end is one is the curiosity and the other one is the empathy. Through curiosity, they, they, they can uh, look for the problems which would, in other terms, would come as the challenges for us. And the other side is the power of empathy, which they should understand. So, so that empathetically, they look at the surroundings and try to understand the pain points of the... Uh, so now, coming to the other part of it. When, when students know that, uh, that this is the thing, and then I need to uh, learn now the design thinking principles to address the challenges. So somewhere uh, back of uh, my mind, uh, one thing comes to me, me that how this is really working worldwide, which are the areas where these principles are really used, the design thinking principles, how they are really benefiting the uh, society. So when I looked at it, uh, in fact, the uh, other day when I'm preparing uh, for this particular presentation, I could see that any any sector, you name it, everywhere the, the, the design thinking principles are used and uh, with a lot of success rate. So people are very happy by using the new principle of design thinking with keeping the user at the center, whether it's a non-profit NGOs or it's a consumer uh, packaged goods or self-improvement, education, financial services, healthcare, you name any field, this design thinking principles are being used. So at the same time, uh, one more question that comes to my mind is all the time when I use the term design, right? So should I get only the tangible goods? So mind, especially the mechanical engineers, we go back to our AutoCAD. I must create something on AutoCAD and then get into 3D modeling and then go for uh, the you know machine, manufacture it, prototype uh, is ready all. No, this is not so. Today in this world, the, the people who are really working uh, for the betterment of uh, the society, they are taking up different kinds of uh, you know problems, which are really required, you believe it or not. Like, uh, if, uh, for example, I, in fact, I, I am just projecting you the you know, list of possible problems already people are uh, addressing. Like, for example, now, uh, personal level last one it, it says help lose weight stop worrying and change your life so this is one of the classic example to use design thinking principle to to design our own life on day to day basis see this this uh, one more is a stanford healthcare design thinking to improve patient experience see patient experience many a times when they enter into uh, the hospital they'll have a lot of pains pains in the form of physical that is uh, due to some ailments at the same time they will have some uh, you know economic pains because they will not be able to really uh, take care of the 
you know, expenses. So this, to this design thinking, we can really uh, look into the, this kind of problems. So I would like to take a pause here. I want the audience to please look at these examples. And if you want to share something, please share on Okay, so any from the audience, any any particular uh, statement you would like to discuss more? Because these are the variety of uh, the problems which are really need our attention. We need to really expose the students that the kind of problems which are tackled through this particular intervention of bringing this course at the first year level should really make uh, the difference. In fact, we can connect all this to our sustainable goals. So sustainable goals and repeatedly we can tell them that the basic role of an engineer is to solve the problems of the society. So throughout their life, they should keep on doing it. So at the same time, if I look at the uh, other uh, companies, any company we name it across the globe everybody is working uh, on uh, the solving their problems through design thinking their principles and it is widely been used okay at the same time uh, it takes our attention to some of the best innovations that have happened using design thinking principles which have really solved the problems of the people we could see some of the statements, but let us see now how exactly the uh, principles of design thinking are uh, helping the people to solve their problems. This is one of the classic example. In fact, we discussed in a very brief last time on 28th. Let us take it now in detail to understand how this has really helped the, the people, benefited the people. See, here, the background for this is we can see here around 20 million premature and low birth weight babies are born every year across the globe. And unfortunately, 4 million babies die within first month because of what? Huh? Because of the requirement of the infant incubator, which 
otherwise they can not afford to save their babies because of the non availability and it is highly expensive because it each one of the each incubator would cost 25000 us dollars uh, so which is completely out of reach for the, the economically weaker section so this this but at the same time there are many people who would donate it uh, to the hospitals uh, but everybody cannot reach the hospital because they stay in remote places what is the answer for this so so here the challenge was how we can create a replacement for such a costly you know uh, equipment by you know designing it so that it can reach everybody when i say reach everybody the cost should be very less affordable so that was the challenge but you believe it or not the, the uh, team of engineers from stanford really worked on it and they developed a, a tiny you know incubator right which costed only 25 us dollars so this is one of the classic example how exactly but the process they adopted that is very important they in fact spent a lot of time in understanding it's 11 o'clock pain points of the infants pain points of the uh, mothers you know pain points of the uh, people who are responsible doctors nurses everybody and uh, one 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 thing here uh, we need to understand here is the moment the the challenge is identified we need to really identify the people who are uh, you know showing interest in it or the people who are part of that entire process and then we need to interact with them to understand their pain points and if it is solved what would be the gains right with uh, proper interaction and then analyze then go to the you know final solution this is one of the classic example like this we have many so netflix has used it left and right uh, to use to understand the needs and expectations of its customers and transformed its business model. See, Netflix initially was in, in a very bad shape, but presently it has got 117 million subscribers in spread over 190 countries. That was possible only when they placed themselves in the shoes of the users, subscribers, the audience, right? When they place themselves, they could understand that they require a different kind of a content, which no, otherwise normally they cannot uh, see on the regular screens. So PVR or uh, other screens on the public, this thing, they cannot see the content which they want to see is something unique that the Netflix can take care of and then produce. Uh, such content and uh, leave it on OTT. So that's uh, how they could use the design thinking principles to understand. See one more example, which is nice one to in fact discuss on is Uber Eats. You know, the mission of uh, the Uber Eats is to make eating well effortless for everyone and everywhere, right? So it connects the restaurants with customers uh, from more 80 cities around the world okay so uh, they they used that empathy to understand their different needs right and they created a delightful experience for everyone see when when i really place myself in the shoes of the uh, sufferer what we call it as otherwise immersion right empathy would normally happen uh, or the connect would happen uh, in three stages one is I uh, get first the uh, observe, engage, and then immerse. See, in, uh, observe is something which I just observe uh, on day-to-day -day basis, and then, then that creates a curiosity in me. I would collect more information about the observations made. Then engage. Yes, I identify the stakeholders or the people connected with this. That particular uh, challenge and then collect a lot of him you know insights and then i immerse inside immersion is the the uh, deeper level of empathy 
So there I understand their pain points very clearly and then provide them a co-created solution. See, there are many uh, challenges the Uber Eats had. Okay, so one among them, like the last paragraph says, uh, it is like a pain of finding parking. See, many times people would stop going to a particular place uh, to eat just because we do not get proper uh, parking facilities. So what they did is they designed a driver app. The moment you enter into that particular zone, it gets activated and it will navigate you to the parking lot. This is the best way to understand the pain points of the, the people uh, for a particular uh, reason. Okay, so the continued innovation is like uh, providing option to the drivers to do rides and delivery both. So they have you Uber cabs and Uber Eats both. So the drivers can do both. They can collect the parcels and deliver it at the same time they can have the rides also, the both they can have. And one more change they bought in is the sales dashboard of the restaurant. They, they designed uh, it in such a way that they can monitor the demand of individual dish, dishes and uh, the other recipes so that which is more in demand, they can keep them in stock. That will give them the judgment on certain uh, fast moving items in the restaurant. So this is how exactly the design principle, uh, principles uh, really worked for the companies. So like this, there are many examples in healthcare also. Uh, the, this is one of the, uh, again, a good example about the uh, people who are suffering from schizophrenia. So they're there, they need a lot of uh, social uh, connect because the uh, symptoms which include are like uh, anxiety, isolation, lack of motivation. So it, it is not possible to uh, treat uh, only with medicine, they need a lot of uh, social uh, uh, networking through which uh, the people of similar uh, problems uh, can share their uh, pains at the same time the other people can suggest them the remedies or they can really help them to come out of that particular situation. So they developed for this, uh, the solution given was through, you know, a, a app called Prime. This app made the people with the schizophrenia to get connected, get you know really registered, and then keep discussing with the other people. Or there there are uh, possibilities wherein the doctors or the uh, other people can log in and then provide them some some solutions or keep sending them some motivational you know messages and also maybe set certain health goals on a continuous basis to make them to overcome this particular problem so this is the uh, again the power of design thinking principle this is one more see one more classic uh, design thinking example see uh, many times without our knowledge we would have created disturbance in the system and the system would be working so powerful that we we in the sense the enterprises would start losing its customers it would start losing the confidence of the customers on the service provided by that particular enterprises so same you know experience was there with the bank of america so they come out with the program called keeping change after they understood the pain points of the people and then this particular program really helped them to overcome the problems what was the problem in that case See, when, when in America, the people were paying their bills through their debit cards, if it is, you know, 17.81, the final price to be paid, it used to round it off and make 18. Using the rule of uh, rounding, it used to make it 18. And unnecessarily, the changes would get de debited from their card. And bank also used to you know, find it difficult to, to deal with those extra money that has been collected. At the same time, customer used to feel bad that why that money is to be paid to them. So that was a stage wherein the bank started really thinking and they applied. In fact, they uh, approached the consultant and they applied 
this design thinking principles and then they came out with a solution that keep the change program wherein the moment they debit you now it is debited from the debit card against certain bill payment the change that is extra would again credited back to the account holder so this made this made uh, the people to again regain the confidence with the service provided by the bank and then the uh, bank started getting good amount of you know registered owners for the, the bank see what exactly happened here it was not easy so when we look into the solution it looks pretty simple you know but to, to arrive at the solution what they really did is they had you know set of you know team who would round the clock worked on capturing the insights of the people connected with these problems and they there used to be a lot of brainstorming sessions and they really designed some uh, prototypes and uh, tested it and uh, and uh, then iteration lot of iterations happened then finally they went in for and uh, one final solution in fact the team in fact uh, they they you know, conducted around 20 sessions and generated 80 product concepts you believe it or not they they developed 80 product concepts before coming to the idea of uh, keep the change program so this is the uh, power of uh, design thinking there's uh, many examples like this one more is a clean team wherein in, in the southern africa they were in the people uh, really designed the very unique uh, sanitation system to, to provide every house uh, the water and the sanitation system they called it as a clean team so they served 5000 people in ghana to, to come out of this particular problem png there's one more uh, brand which really used this. Uh, I'll not go deep into it, but uh, you can definitely log into their websites and try to understand how this design thinking principle really worked for them. It is one more Stanford uh, medicine, that's Stanford Hospital, which really used the design thinking as a tool for problem solving, involving empathy, and it mainly used to enhance the experience of the patients in that hospital okay and nike really used to understand the pain points of the athletes who would be otherwise using normal shoes to run on the track so they developed or uh, designed and developed a unique shoe which would in, in a literal meaning would interact with the uh, user and provide the kind of uh, you know safety and the uh, comfort required so this is about some of the uh, examples which are really in but when you come to the other side of the story there are many good products being really designed uh, in support of the requirements of the people in a social space like one of them is the life the life straw uh, uganda where they don't get to the uh, good water quality water to drink this is the straw which is designed and developed and provided which has got a filter in it and which would really filter the water and then help them to get a good drinking water facility and this is a cue drum wherein uh, again uh, people in a remote place would almost travel eight to ten kilometers to fetch the drinking water so this is a uniquely designed product which is uh, like a toy for the kids to play they can easily uh, roll, roll down this and then collect the water from the distance and then use it. And a roti making machine in Ishkan temple where in looking into the requirement of the people, they designed and developed it uh, empathetically understanding. So these are all the examples which would now really make us to uh, know what this concept of design is all about. How exactly this really works right so there is a basic uh, approach which is called a uh, two diamond uh, approach which uh, otherwise uh, will have two you know spaces the left side space is the problem space and the right side is the solution space 
okay so how exactly it starts the entire journey would start with uh, diverging thinking divergent thinking so wherein i try to explore more and collect all possible pains see when i'm really collecting the pains in fact we'll go deep deep into it when we go to the empathy phase so when i really go to the the user to understand their pain points they would not be ready with the the, the very nicely written statements that uh, to say that these are my pain points it's very difficult so they know it they do not know is a condition where they are into so it is for me to explore discuss and make them to open that's what i said they observe engage and then immerse so i need to really observe first and then engage and then go for immersion to understand their pain points all the possible things are collected through you know using uh, empathy or empathetically i need to collect then i converge down to draw a meaningful understanding of the pain points what they are having right so sometimes if i am not able to speak a good english it seem it, it it is at a superficial level it looks like a problem but when i go deep into it the, it has created so many pains in the minds of the people or for the people who are really not able to speak good english those pain points if we tackle and address the problem would get solved automatically so that is essential here so i need to get a clear idea about the challenge i am going to address okay then we are going to again go into the right uh, uh, side where in again we uh, diverge to look for multiple solutions right and after the multiple solutions are identified there are many tools available today to assess those you know solutions identified and then identify or select the most appropriate solution for the challenge i have identified and then uh, implement it so this is exactly how the concept of innovation works so if i look at the right side two circles see one side we have a designer one side i have a user and the intersection area is the empathy that means designer if he is able to really get into the shoes of the user then i start understanding their you know pain points just try to understand it's a wonderful concept these two circles at one point of time would become one when when they become one when the designer completely understand the pain points of the user and they together formulate please understand it is called a co generated challenge when it becomes a common problem when they understand each other and then they arrive at a co generated problem these two circles will club and what it becomes one so that is the time when we have a clear idea about what problem should get solved right so the same concept can be understood through a innovation model so any problem when we are trying to solve first thing what should happen is it should be a desirable one it's really a great model which has really made us to understand how innovation should work see desirability is something wherein whatever i have identified as a challenge is required by the stakeholders that's what exactly i was trying to show here these two circles you know designer and user and the user has got set of uh, pains and designer has got his own way of uh, looking at it if they uh, work in isolation the center part would never happen empathy would never get activated i would never be able to place in the shoes of the user and then identify their problems so is once i identify it once i do it then it becomes a desirable one the problem or the challenge what i have identified becomes a desirable one okay once it is desirable i need to subject that particular challenge for feasibility so that means is it possible to do it then is it viable to do it so three things we need to address and the intersection of all three would be the solution space or the 
innovation that really addresses the problem. So in, a, in other terms, we can even look at it this way, that this is the stakeholders, what they want, that is a desirability, what the community wants or society wants or, or what the user wants, that is the uh, desirability. And can we do it is the second question. So technologically, is it feasible or can you do it? And third is economically, is it viable? So three things, three questions we need to really answer. And once uh, the, we uh, answer these questions, the possible area is a central one where the intersection of all these three would result into the very meaningful solution. Right. So this is what is the basic, uh, you know, understanding about innovation. So now, with this, there are many people throughout the world, the innovators have really come out with the best of the best uh, classic examples to, to really code. See, this is one example, the man who invented roti makers to help his mother. This man is from Karnataka. Okay, his name is uh, Yen Gomai and uh, who really understood the pain the mother is taking in making rotis for his entire family, right? So he really worked on it. He's basically a man who has got a lot of passion to, to, to address the, the various problems. So he developed, he developed this particular model, a roti making model, and uh, uh, which is now uh, costing 15,000 rupees, uh, easy to operate, and weighs just six kgs and uh, 180 chapati or roti in an hour can be you know ruled out so this is the best example for understanding and here just see all the three circles are at this first thing the first one is it is required see why i'm repeatedly saying this is once it is done and if the user is not looking at it and say that this is not i'm looking for i don't need it it's out of your passion you have done it but i'm not have it say for example say long back there was one scooter which was released to the market called vaspa xc i don't know how many of us really you know, able to recall that model it was a very good uh, scooter we thought that it is going to be a replacement for bajaj scooters bajaj super bajaj uh, you know we had other models we thought that it is going to replace the Pajas scooter or give a uh, heavy or strong uh, fight to the Bajaj company, but it did not happen. But initially, there was a waiting period of six months, eight months, but the company really failed to deliver what it promised because of that. People did not wanted it. They did not. They rejected that product. So because these three circles really did not work well there. So in this example, we can see that it is really required. Yes, he has understood the pain points of the mother and he really developed a model taking care of all these circles. And it is feasible, yes, he checked it and it is feasible to do it. And is it economically feasible if I do it? See now, uh, if it can roll out 180 chapatis or roti in an hour, it is definitely a good, number to even earn their day-to-day -day earnings this is one more example it looks very uh, funky but this rock artist who is otherwise uh, from the social background was economically very weak has come out with the uh, music instrument called bumham it's not a guitar it's a bumham so through that now he has become a uh, band artist in Nagaland. Chula maker from Kerala, right? Jay Prakash, uh, who has really uh, sold around 800, uh, 8,000 eco friendly stores, is again all the three circles using that and desirability and technical feasibility and uh, viability develop the products. And uh, a serial innovator from Assam who really uh, made handloom weaving easy. It's one more example, right? 
it's again a rural innovator from uh, Gujarat who has developed uh, you know, low cost tractors and also built 25 dams in a simple way. Uh, he is one more innovator. So this one more innovator from Rajasthan who made uh, thrashing uh, easy for you are, Hello. Hello? There's a slight disturbance. Okay, fine. Shall I continue? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. So uh, the, this is one more example uh, about the innovator. Like this, there are plenty we, we can look into. The last time, in fact, I told you to get into Better India you know, link uh, to look for uh, what is happening on daily basis. So uh, this is really uh, making us to understand how this innovation model is working, how this innovators uh, are really addressing the needs of the society by understanding or giving the, uh, the study on desirability, uh, technical feasibility and the viability part. So now we are coming to the end of the second stage of a workshop wherein the first one would be to say setting the context. We have explained them uh, the basic objectives of the course and uh, we have really made them to understand the core of empathy, how it really helps us to understand the pain points of the people. And through a lot of examples, you know, we have understood how this innovation works, innovators, you know, work, how is their mindset, where they will focus. And now we are ready to get into the process of design thinking. See now here, we, we have set the context objectives and we have seen the power of empathy. And uh, we have seen how this innovation model works and then innovators and concept of innovation. See now, when, when I'm really uh, taking this course to the students, what should really happen? The first class, very first class, if, if this course is given to me, for example, how I really design my first class, that is very much essential. So let us spend a little time on that. Since it is for the first year engineering students, I must definitely show them that everything what they do is connected to engineering. Right. Second is being the students of engineering profession, they have plenty of role to play in, in the entire process. These two things should go very strong into the minds of the students, right? So uh, for that, what I would really do, I would focus on two aspects. One is engineering in society and engineers in society, two things. So when I say engineering, I should really expose them to the best of the examples, the marvels that have happened in each of the domains like mechanical, electrical, electronics, computer science, so civil engineering. So how uh, even biotechnology, chemical, aeronautical, there are so many branches. So what, how exactly this engineering is making our life simple, correct, by innovating the new things which really making our life uh, you know simple so that we really need to expose and the second one is what is the role of the engineers in this entire transformation is as a problem solvers so they should really activate their observation skills they should activate their uh, the power of curiosity and uh, they should build the empathetic nature to capture the requirements so this should be made very clear to them and then taken through the course. So uh, the eight hours of uh, workshop, what we are now planning should really make them to go through this. Maybe one exercise we can make it compulsory for the students to without their understanding after every 
module is completed with contact setting innovation. Uh, we can really give them uh, some 10 minutes time to log on to the net, uh, work for uh, or give them some, some websites, links like uh, Better India and uh, other uh, websites to go through that and prepare their own uh, notes and reflect back for 5-10 minutes and then continue. So now we are moving to the third module that is our third part of our discussion that is the design thinking principles. Let us go to that. Right. Yes. So let us understand what is design thinking. So it is simplicity in complexity. So design thinking helps us to resolve the complex problems. It's very interesting. Complex. So there's one more term gets activated when I say complex problems, the complicated problems. So the problems what we are trying to, or we try to solve as challenges are should be complex in nature. The complicated ones needs different you know attention or the uh, involvement or uh, the involvement. So uh, approach uh, the, the, the complicated is one like like I am trying to solve a challenge, but the interventions of the political. Uh, personalities would make it complicated that means there is a set process but they have spoiled it those are complicated problems but what we are now discussing here are the complex problems that means they are open-ended they are unmet needs of the society which needs our attention so that we can apply our uh, the phases or the principles of the design thinking and capture the needs, the pain points, and then proceed further. So simplicity and complexity is the initial complex nature of the problem when we really go on unlayering one by one, understanding the challenge at the micro level, automatically the solution becomes very simple and acceptable to the user. See now. See, the picture very clearly shows that the, the here it is a people focused method. Try to understand every word which is uh, written here really conveys some meaning. It's a, a design thinking is a people focused method used to solve ill defined. That means they are not structured. If you know your problem well, 80% of the problem is solved. But here it is ill defined, it's open ended. I need to unlayer the problem and then the clarity of it, where exactly I need to focus. Right? Say, for example, very simple example we'll take of a garbage issue in, in a locality when it happens. So, if I look at the garbage uh, being thrown on the uh, undefined uh, places, right, people would look that people do not have and others do not have the civic awareness so we need to create the awareness so only through awareness it will not solve so i need to really understand the complexities of that particular problem and i should understand the people involved in it what are their pain points and why this is happening then that means if i draw my you know uh, point of view that is called pov that is the clarity of the problem then I can really solve this problem using the, these principles. So this particular design thinking is a people-focused method to solve ill-defined societal problems through innovative solutions. Otherwise, it is said, design thinking is simplicity and complexity. Okay. So continue our uh, discussion on what is design thinking. It's a human-centered problem-solving tool, point number one. It's a human centered in sense. I'm keeping user at the center to solve the problem, which emphasize on it emphasizes on empathy. Empathy is required to understand the pain points. Collaboration. So it's a team based. Okay. And co-creation. That's what I showed you two circles wherein 
uh, one side we have a designer, other side we have a user, they should merge and then it should become one. It should become a co-generated or co-created problem so that the solution what we give will be meaningful and the stakeholders feedback to unlock creativity and innovation which devises feasible and viable solutions then it believes that people who face problems are the one who hold the key to their problems and answer they know it they know the solution but they will not be able to do it because of some constraint some issues so that the people who really understand their pain points will be able to provide the solution like the best example is incubator right they, they knew that they need an incubator which would cost very less solution was with them the people who were suffering with it they knew the solution but they were unable to get it so that's where the role of the designer the role of innovator would come who would really understand the pain points and then design accordingly and provide the product or solution see now ultimately key to process is em emphasizing with the user to uncover unmet needs by understanding their beliefs values motivations behaviors pains gains and challenges and provide innovative solutions so now the question would come many times it has been asked that means when i apply design thinking principles it's a product that comes out no not all the time it can be a product or it can be a process or it can be a redefined service but more significantly it is an experience we are going to provide through this right so so that the entire ecosystem what is built would address the need of the people and most importantly and customers today are accepting passive consumption to active participation we should spend some time on understanding this what is passive consumption to active participation see gone are when is that i just go and buy the product uh, 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 which is available on the catalog and then once i come out i'll find some some problems with this but today you name any product all the products are plus less in the sense there are no errors in that it meets our requirements sometimes they surpass our requirements so they are actively making us to participate in the entire process of you know um, buying or it is maybe the restaurant in all the places for example now if, if the other day i had been to one place in goa wherein i could find the, the uh, restaurant they are giving me a different experience if I order some items, they would immediately take me to the chef, right? Chef will understand my request and show all the possible items of the qualities, different varieties, right? And say which, what kind of uh, level, ingredients uh, you want in that. So accordingly, he'll prepare and then serve me. So that means he is giving me a different kind of experience. And I love to go to that restaurant whenever I visit that particular place. So that's how the today's market making a customer an active participant. That's very important. So I need to make the uh, person who is in need of certain things, whether it's in a social space or otherwise, I need to make a person actively participating in the process of money. So they seek genuine experiences and they are ready to pay anything. See, the best example is the uh, more or a relaxed uh, shop wherein we go and buy the vegetables. Forget about the men. Women also, I know, happy to go and buy. Otherwise, they would love to negotiate with the roadside vendors. Go to you know marketplace and then spend a lot of time in negotiating the things. If they say 10 rupees, they'll reduce it to 8. And men are also not different from this. Even they are good negotiators. Okay, they see that they reduce it and then take it, but that doesn't happen with more or reliance. Right? Why? Because of the kind of experience they are providing, they are very happy and they are ready to pay anything for that. Risk anything to seek that involvement. Right? So this is the change. This is the paradigm shift that has happened now. That is where this user-centered approach is really essential for us to learn. This is what we should make it clear to the students.
how exactly see i'll tell you it's a wonderful journey i have seen every year i'm i'm really uh, coming out with the 250 projects done by my students in, in the social space right the first year our intake is around 1280 all the students compulsively go through this process of uh, tackling the problems uh, using uh, design thinking principles in all uh, there will be 250 plus projects done and the experience what they gain is wonderful it's amazing and the kind of mindset with which they enter their parent department is really commendable appreciable and they they really make the difference so we are creating really asset for the the, the nation now in that process they understand how to tackle the problems so how to convert the user from passive mode to active mode this is the greatest advantage by by using the design thinking principle because this is the only approach which uses uh, or by, uh, by left brain and right brain you know moderately and then uh, allow us to come out with the best possible solution see there is one understanding put it in some model form uh, comparing analytical thinking with the creativity how this goes with the design thinking it is it complements or it, it uses both it requires no really require analytical and creative thinking so if supposing my analytical thinking is low and creativity is also low and if i try to solve a challenge or trying to address the challenge and it becomes a failure because it becomes non-user centric why because it's analytical is like my left brain and uh, creativity is my right brain so if both are low right i fail to get connected with the user itself correct so naturally it becomes a big failure if analytical ability is low and creativity is high then it becomes a dreamer kind of a ambitious i am ambitious but i don't put in any efforts like like I want to reduce my weight. I'm overweight. I want to reduce my weight by five kgs, and that becomes my goal for next three months. Good, right? But I do not get up in the morning. In fact, the process says that five o'clock you should get up, go for five kilometers walk, then maintain the diet. No, even if I go for a walk, when I come back, I'll have four dosa or six idli and then sambar, everything, and then still or hold one you know samosa in one hand and one kachori in my other hand and then still claim that i want to reduce my weight no that's all right so if any of these two are low then it becomes like a daydreamer you are high in creativity but low with analytical thinking it doesn't work so if analytical thinking is high and creativity is low what would happen is it becomes incremental and it is non-sustainable the solutions will not be then what should happen is both should be you know high if it is high that is nothing but it's a design thinking working there it's a breakthrough and it is user centric if i i uh, look in for analytical what it does analytical help me to solve the problem and it is problem centric right my left brain would always look for a problem centric right so well defined problem i would be working on and it fit into an existing world but on the other side if creativity when it cut across this particular thinking right it helps me to get into user centric mode and create a new world so it should be Finally, the conclusion is the analytical ability should be high and the creativity should be high in order to bring in the difference in the place we live. This is one understand, conceptual understanding which is put in the form of some diagram. But to, to continue your journey, what is essential now? How do I start my journey? Okay, all this is appreciable. We have looked into a lot of innovations happening. And how to take our students into this process? What is that essential for them to get ready? What is the preparation they need to make? First of all, they need to set their mind. To set their mind, they should understand 
there are many possibilities that just one one set of uh, elements i have taken like this if you just get into uh, the books available there are plenty of books available maybe at the end of the journey i'll show you some of the books which are good to look into you know for design thinking there are plenty of things that are available or you can even take up a course i would suggest a human centered design approach course offered by you know hcd of id ido.org ideo.org there is one human centered design approach course every year twice they run it it's a free course everybody should take it everybody should take it wherein they make you to formulate a team and then they'll make you to get on to a project and apply all these principles and really allow you to taste the flavor of design thinking that's this is that would be a wonderful course every one of us should complete no, it's a i would say it's a five weeks course but if your speed is good you can complete it with less time and experience on your own how it really works before before really uh, taking this course to the students right so this is one set of uh, elements it's 12 o'clock we would be talking about see see here one is the empathy mindset so they have to so, but how do they check empathy that's the question is there any measurements i can uh, see uh, with the students that you know how this empathy how how well they are really getting connected empathetically to the external world i i should really think over it it's a debatable issue i don't have a really a standard measures through which i can measure it and say a person is 80 percent empathetic 20 percent empathetic he is not empathetic it's very difficult to me it's only judged through their the quality of observations they capture the way how they really build a story storytelling is now actually it's one of the best quality which we should really get developed in us connecting the dots and then explaining what exactly is happening and and when i'm explaining i'll be able to show the kind of pains one is going through right that shows how empathetic a person is and the second one is we, we focus on or make students to understand that don't go on telling me the, 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 the things show it show it don't tell and uh, experiment try to conduct a lot of experiments so early failures are really encouraged as far as such courses are concerned such open-ended courses are really taken students should really fail at the early stage with their observations being made so that the iteration can happen meaningfully and then we come out with the good uh, you know set objectives achieve the objectives very easily so the last the, the fourth point is i need to give uh, pay attention to clarity this is where exactly we find a difficulty so when we say somebody or the students to get on to the observation mode I said no observe engage and then you go to you know immerse right so we go with lot of baggage or in our mind preconceived assumptions it works it will not work who said it will work it will not work last time it did not work so why we should take it so a lot of you know unwanted questions we carry in our mind which are preloaded preloaded and miss many of the important very critical elements during our observation so paying attention to clarity is quite essential and uh, then i should be able to collaborate with the people right time i should really pull in the people who are essentially required to contribute their inputs for uh, the overall you know understanding so collaboration is important and we should be action oriented when i say action oriented it, it it should not be only on the papers i should be able to convert it into a neatly defined action plan and then take up one by one so this is what is the preparation a students need to do before getting on to the journey of applying the user centric approach that is design thinking principles in tackling the challenges so uh, like this many platforms have said many things 
we can really uh, make students to understand them and then take them into the next stage of the journey. So here, now we are moving on to the various phases. This particular, you know, approach will, you know, show. So since we are using the Stanford model, we have five phases. The first phase is empathy. Understand the user needs. Then I move on to getting the clarity. That's a point of view when I say, how do I get the clarity? The question here is, understanding needs is fine. I've observed, I've collected, and then I have understood their pain points well. But uh, the explosion of that particular understanding and drawing a meaningful, you know, uh, I say the information on that particular challenge is quite essential. Correct? So I, I would like to take you through one uh, simple uh, thing. We all know it. That is something called system thinking. We all should understand very clearly how the system thinking is really would work. Just look into this. That's what I'm trying to say, that getting the clarity of it. Correct? So if I take certain things in isolation without properly connecting with the other elements of it, then I would be addressing only one part of the problem. The solution what would give will not solve, will not solve the problem. Correct? So I have few examples to share once we proceed and go into the empathy in more detailed manner. But this is the classic example wherein uh, five blind were touching or, or blindfolded uh, people, they were allowed to touch elephant and say what it is. Correct? So they they with less clarity. And what I'm trying to emphasize here is you have to have a clarity. You have to go with open mind to understand what has been captured. Right? Otherwise, this is what would happen. Somebody would say it's a wall, somebody would say it's a rope, somebody would say it's a tree, it's a snake, it's bear and fan. So it's it's unconnected. So we need to, in fact, adopt a design thinking, sorry, system thinking approach to complement our entire process of solving the, you know, problems. Right. So uh, then once I get the clarity, I can definitely move on. For generating multiple ideas, there are many uh, tools available to, to generate multiple ideas. I'll just show you how exactly that, uh, that is done. And then go for a prototyping. You will know the uh, other day we were discussing more on this prototyping. You can have your own method to, to really uh, come out with the early model you know, of the solution. And then test it, implement it, and collect the feedback from the users. Then if any modification is required, do the iteration, come back, make the corrections and then submit. This is how the phase would go. Now, at this particular point of time, I would really want to take a two minutes break in the sense I would like to attract some, some questions on this, whatever has been discussed so far. Please, uh, you know, put it on the, the chat box. Uh, yeah, somebody said uh, uh, ido.org, I'll just uh, uh, typing it, it is called ido.org and you should look for, you know, human centered design course. It's, it's simply, it is called HCD course. Right. So I put it in the chat box. You can uh, try it out and then see. If you have anything to discuss at this point of time, uh, uh, yeah, somebody said, uh, I think it is uh, Kavita, Madam said, how to improve creativity or be highly analytical. Madam, both these qualities are within us. Only thing is, we have not activated them. All are creative, all are analytical. Right. We have not activated them. If you just look into the, the way how we react to certain, some of the situations, right? You will understand how creative we are. For example, 
to make a boy or a, or a girl to get up early at 5 30 to go to the uh, tuition mother would use all the possible creativity to see that they get up on time and go to the attend their regular duties right so she is very creative so like this we are highly creative all of us are highly analytical thinkers but the only thing is we are not activating those qualities we always have the fear that what would happen if i do this we need to move out of that fear first and uh, be ready to fail at any point of time but early failure is good early failure is good it's like it's like a say i prepare a recipe you know how the mother actually they were kitchen is the best place to to generate all this management theories and practices all this that's the best place to learn see i'll tell you so when 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 some new dish is been prepared or you forget about the new dish when she cuts certain vegetables right especially cucumber what she does the moment she would take the both the end pieces and taste it and if it is not okay she would reject at this point of time itself is it not the good practice instead of you know, cutting it and you know, preparing it once the uh, recipe is done when it's served and if the people say that no it's spoiled it's not a good one so value addition has happened so that before adding the value to the product or the service it's better to you know reject it when it is really not addressing your need so that's how i would say everybody in our life are creative and we have the analytical ability but we, we, we fail to activate them okay so any other questions so there is one so dr uh, anupama madam that is i have taken today for first year as per syllabus i discussed about teams and groups how they are different madam can you put uh, some more details uh, on, about this about teams in the, in the sense what is that you mean to say the, the teams uh, team approach in solving the problem in the design thinking how, how it was is it part of the first module you are talking about or is it a part of your context setting okay maybe uh, madam can answer later uh, uh, with this let us move second uh, shashikant uh, professor is saying that this website work the dot org doesn't okay okay so simply what you can do is on google you go and the human center design uh, approach hcd course on coursera it will let take you that course uh, even you can do that also that that would work right so let us uh, move on to the next part of it so with this basic idea let us now understand the phase this is one by one empathy so it's really a quite interesting part i love it how that is i tell you it is like understanding the feelings of the other person correct i'm going to mirror their expressions their opinion their hopes right see this picture picture is conveying everything see if i'm holding a hand of the other person right and if there is no proper connection happen mentally then that is not empathy correct it is like holding for the sake of holding so i am not understanding the need of a other person the pains of the other person if that proper connection doesn't happen correct so I, i this is what exactly is the empathy so there are certain elements when i'm really talking about the empathy there are certain elements which you really understand and uh, focus on first thing it is like seeing the life through eyes of the other person empathy is 
see the life through the eyes of the other person. I am going to place myself in the shoes of the other person. Right. And second, understand and capture their feelings and pain points. Yes. And third is, element is, I cannot become judgmental. That I must. It is the, I would say, the important thing which I should never forget that I cannot become judgmental. The moment you become judgmental, I'll just take you back to that particular you know, circle. It's very important here to discuss on that. The moment I become judgmental, see here, my right side, the designer circle will start moving away from user. You, you think something else and the user wants something else. So there is no, you know, common place wherein you are understanding their point, pain points and the user is accepting you as a person who is going to solve his problem okay that is quite essential i cannot become judgmental at any point of time right and fourth point is it is i have you know really need to communicate and understand this is very important we are very poor with it whenever i observe something i document vaguely no, documentation is must. The one of the elements of empathy is whenever certain observations are made, placing ourselves in the shoes of the other person, I need to document and then communicate and it should become co-generated. Remember this, this terminology is very clearly, it should be co-generated, right? So if I uh, recapture all this, empathy is nothing but seeing the problems of the or life of the other person to, through their eyes. Okay, then understand and capture the pain points and the feelings uh, empathetically using there are many tools you can use you know empathy mapping uh, you can use a persona uh, user persona there are many tools available today through which you can you know really document and capture it so I cannot become judgmental and I need to document it clearly and communicate back to the user and make it what co-generated one then how to empathize this is where this is the question you know most of the times it comes to our mind how do i start how do i empathize myself and then go into it's a, it's easy to say that to go into the shoes of the other person what does it mean what does that mean so it is first observe you know how the users are really interacting with the environment capture certain codes, behavior and other notes that reflect their experience. Notice what they think, feel, need. It's the first level of empathy. I'm now going deep into it. First, I make all the, all the observations and then collect without attaching my understanding to it. Please, I'm repeating, never ever become judgmental. When you become judgmental, you miss certain things from recording. You say that, Hey, it doesn't work. It's a minor one. Don't don't write it. It, it. it doesn't work. But actually speaking, that would be the change making, you know, line which really brings in a lot of details about the observations. So we should never miss any of the minor observations. Then engage. Second level of empathy is engage. There I should go with a set of people who are responsible for that and then start talking to them, conduct interviews, schedule or ad hoc and learn how to ask right questions. That is important here. And during engage, I should really, you believe it or not, before going to the person, I should know how I should really react or uh, sorry, approach, what approach I should really adopt in order to talk to that person. Right. Then create that environment before start your discussion. And then I, I uh, interact with them and collect their insights about the problem which I have really identified. Then immerse. Then I can go into their shoes slowly. Then see the or get capture the entire picture what they have about that particular problem and understand the pain points very clearly. This is what exactly I need to follow systematically. So uh, somebody can ask, sir, can I draw a line after observe? Now I say observation is done. 
then engagement is done then i'm immersing is done no no they they in fact uh, complement each other and uh, there is a very thin line thin thin demarcation between these three you know elements so when i move from one to other i no, never know sometimes i will be you know shifting between these three after immersed i may come back to again observing certain things and then engage myself and immerse. so this is the iterative process i keep on doing it till i really get the complete picture about the you know challenge that i have really captured so it is like putting yourself in the shoes of that example here right so this is the uh, scientist uh, patricia she was studying the pain points of uh, the, the senior the citizen uh, suffering from with arthritis okay so she, she literally went into the character she literally went into the character to understand the pain points the, the kind of you know uh, uh, routine she was leading how she was leading how this is the, the, these ailments are really affecting her day to day life how it is making her life really slow you know from achieving certain things so all these things are really captured okay and then attack see the, the, this is actually a classic example to discuss on if if empathetically i look at at the very superficial level and i go with certain assumptions and saying that my elderly person in my family had a similar one and they went to one particular doctor and it is solved but the problems of your elderly person in your family and this person may not be same the pain may be same in the sense the pain in the knees or the legs that may be same but what is worrying them what are their pain points may be different because this lady for example may be a key person in the family and they are taking care of all the load and she is the only earning member and she has to take care of her family and they are not able to do it because of this that is her pain point correct so that's why she is really suffering with lot of uh, the depression so why as a design engineer or design thinker you should really capture those that's why i said clarity i cannot just say that she has a pain in her knees i should get rid of it so what i can do i can take her to the doctor get it you know really uh, attended and the problem is solved no problem will not be solved correct the actual problem will be something else so those pain points we need to really capture through this empathy process so see now if if i miss it what will happen this is the the best example if we miss to understand the pain points or the requirements of the person this exactly would happen what we provide and what is expected by the people or rather how they react to it correct so initial design you have kept a nice design for the you know, campus but people would use the shortcut so we fail to capture or their behavior when i say the, the uh, requirements it is an obvious thing that people would always look for the shortcuts i should have it in my mind so if i i, I would have you believe it or not some of the campuses now are leaving their you know design to you know experience for few days trial experience and then go to the final one that's what we discussed other day through the mvp minimum viable product you remember uh, as a part of prototyping that's what exactly should happen i'll release my product or service with limited features and attract the feedback from the uh, people who would start using it then i go for the remaining ones so that the risk involved is less the cost part would be taken care of and i if there are certain failures i'll be seeing or experiencing those failures early early in the stage of the product development or service development so this is the best example what we can see one more today morning i got it uh, in whatsapp this is really wonderful this there is no limit uh, to it so how uh, uh, the companies the the platforms are really uh, uh, moving along with us and uh, working and literally putting their head into our mind and then controlling it see now 
Dilpreet Singh, head the CRM of one of the company, Opera Group, he has, he has shared this in, in the WhatsApp, right? He ordered what he ordered for a stool. And Amazon said, customers who bought this item also bought. <laughs> so they suggested if somebody wants to commit suicide and he is depressed, the stool is not the one uh, sufficient. You need to buy a fan and also uh, what rope, jute rope, so that your purpose is met. Okay, the, the, the lighter side of it, but this clearly shows how closely they are really understanding our emotional needs right they are slowly understanding what the person is really looking for or what has not come to your mind should come and afterwards don't repent that i did not get that so now we are you know supporting you with this the, the alternatives so that uh, at once you can complete that correct that's how they are closely they are monitoring our behavior right and uh, this is the classic example so this, these two, right? It is showing us that we must really keep the user at the center before you design something. And here to understand how the system is really working now. They are not allowing us to sit quietly. All the time they are just understanding what I need, what I need. So accordingly, they design the system, they design the product, they design the process and leave it back to us for our usage. So now um, the question comes, what we should really do in order to make students to capture a challenge from the place where they live because they need to work on a small project. That's what is expected through this course. Okay. To realize the knowledge what they have taken, they should really work on a small project. How they should really do it. So that is what we can call it as a community study through empathy. Okay. So uh, this is what I can really tell them that it's a profession which is uh, we should really create value by providing solution to the unmet needs of the design channel. But how they should start understanding where they should focus on when they go to the community or they start looking for the design challenges, how they should really look at it. Okay. I have a few examples to discuss on. This is one example of the school from a rural uh, remote uh, area wherein the children who are attending the school are below, below the poverty line. Right. So they, they, they uh, interest in uh, coming to the school is very less. Right. So then what will happen if this particular problem when it is looked from the conventional solution. So we are making the difference here. For the students to understand because when i say the students to identify the challenge they identify and immediately they go for the solution also i should really restrict them from doing it of course our mind is very you know think, thinking all the time so the moment i see some problems i look from that is what i say judgmental that is not attached my thinking to it that is not attached the uh, my assumptions to it but here if you take this example the conventional uh, solution to this problem is hiring more teachers to teach curriculum and then building more classrooms and attract the students but that is not the case here i'm just taking you back to the uh, issue here the, the background is the students are from the rural area who hail from bop families to study okay and uh, score marks won't make them competitive going ahead their basic interest is to be, you know, taken care of. So if this is solved by a social innovator, like a student who are going to be, become a, a chota social innovators by the end of this course. So there the innovator look at the core issue here, empathy, understand their problems. Okay. Hailing from poor families, they are introduced to working for their daily bread and so have never been conditions for schooling. Their mind is not conditioned for schooling. That is the core area, core issue. Their mind is not set for coming to the schools. So 
what I should do instead of just pushing and urging the children to go to the school, which would be otherwise taken care by the conventional solution. The social innovator will introduce newer pedagogical tools for learning, which attracts them to come to the school. Right? It's even this has been practiced in some of the convent schools after the COVID uh, impact. Those, those children were less interested to go to the school to create that interest. They just made a certain modification at the entrance uh, gate. The gate was designed uh, into some some uh, toy or maybe in the form of Archie, you know, maybe in the form of uh, some other uh, doll or uh, this thing. And once they jump into the ground, there are certain tiles being put when they uh, keep their uh, foot on that it makes a noise so that interest is created uh, in the students to come into the campus correct so here also when the social innovators look into this they will design interactive learning content and make it fun to learn so this is what we need to really discuss with our students this is the, the kind of exposure they should have before trying to apply the principles of design thinking right so i have one more example to discuss here this is see this is the normal scene in most of the uh, houses a maid comes to our house every day morning over the time we realize that her situation is no different from millions of women from disadvantaged section of the society that is husband who doesn't earn three to four children with the last one being boy and uh, precarious financial position that leaves hardly any income for education or higher needs of family. That means that pain is seen on the face of uh, the maid servant. It's, a, it's a, a common story in most of the houses. But this, when this is addressed in a conventional manner, we all are doing this. Just, I think all of us are getting connected with this in our house. What we do? Yearly once there's an increment in the salary or the pay what I wages I pay and I, I provide or give all my old clothes to her and I'll see that whatever leftover food I just ask her to take. This is how I feel that I'm helping her. But her pain points are different. This will never bring you know smile on the face of the uh, maid servant. Right? So what will happen? What, what the social innovator would do, right? And maybe I can give this as an open-ended uh, exercise to the students to uh, say how they would tackle if they are given this problem, you know. So social innovator will dig deeper to analyze the maid's spending habits. That means how she would do it. And in this case, in fact, they developed a digital wallet for her because today that is possible. They developed a, they designed a digital wallet for her where her husband cannot snatch the money once the salary is done. And it was controlled by uh, her owner wherein she would ask, give her list of the expenses and all the payments would be made directly to the vendor or somebody. So her money is saved. This would, to some extent, would bring a smile on her face. So this is the difference, right? I think now we are able to understand or get convinced how this design thinking principles would work. Let us take one more example of orphan school children, wherein they come from different uh, you know families. Uh, they are having a lot of emotional baggage, which needs to be handled with love, care, and understanding. They need a lot of love, care, and understanding. But what? These normally the homes will do, correct? They just uh, push children into the competitive environment. They think that they are uh, doing great job by making them educated and then teaching them all the skill sets so that they can stand on their own legs. This is fine. It's still required, but I can move out of that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, extending the care to them, extending the, 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 the love to them or creating that environment wherein they, they really feel comfortable. So if this is being tackled from a social innovator and then he would really empathetically design a pedagogical intervention that would include counseling, training in life skills, 
and various vocational courses to make themselves sufficient instead of just pushing them into competitive educational system. Right? Understanding their pain points, individual level. So, girl is good with uh, certain uh, basic uh, prerequisites. I can develop her uh, qualities further and then make her comfortable. So, this is the difference. These three examples, what we discussed, will really create a kind of a mind to the students after understanding what empathy is, can go to outside in search of the challenges. Correct. And initially, if I want to take you back to the slide, what we discussed, what kind of problems really addressed through design thinking and you know, approach, right? This is quite essential. This this entire uh, you know, explanation or the journey would make students to really get connected to their learning part. Okay. So now, you know, this entire innovation starts with empathy. So there are three types of empathy, cognitive empathy, right, emotional empathy, and then compassionate empathy. And we want the students to get into this compassionate empathy. This, in fact, we discussed last time in detail, but let me again take you through uh, quickly. The cognitive empathy is like the uh, touch and go kind of a thing, where during your online meeting, when you are uh, talking to your colleagues and all, there is again empathy being developed. To understand their pain points with the kind of a workload they have kind of a, a results they need to give that is would get vanished by the time the, the meeting is over but emotional empathy is something which is like when the coaching is done when the mentoring is done the, the mentor is trying to place his uh, or her shoes or uh, her play herself into the shoes of the the, the uh, mentee correct so trying to understand their, their pain points and then uh, making or empower them with the, the kind of strength they need to develop. Okay, but what is we are uh, expecting from the students to do is a compassionate empathy. It is considers the whole person. This is a, this is a type of empathy that we are usually striving for. So it is continuous. It is not just the kind of other two classifications though this is a compassionate empathy wherein i need to con completely understand the pain points of the uh, sufferer so this is the better way to understand how this empathy works what we should really do when going for uh, looking for the, the challenges around us so when i look it from the other angle these two are giving the true picture but the truth is uncommon so uh, by, by empathizing myself with the sufferers, I need to get the truth, not the true images. They are also correct. But I should definitely get the truth. It is possible only when I go with the open mind. That is what we say that students should go with the beginner's mind. Uh, anybody who would try to really capture the uh, pain points of the other person i should really go with the beginner's mindset what is a beginner's mind it is a pre unprejudiced mind and it is open for everything correct so if i go with uh, uh, expert as an expert that's the problem with most of us that you know i go as an expert i know it don't worry you know, I, I last time i've handled I am just sitting here. I can give you all that award that fellow is going to speak. Don't worry. If I'm going to make stress, I know his entire family and entire background. Don't worry. So this is a kind of you know confidence, you know, which overconfidence or sometimes it's a wrong uh, understanding about the person. We would spoil in everything. So I, if I go with a business a beginner's mind, then there are many possibilities. But if I go with the expert's mind. I'm going to reduce those possibilities, right? So actually, we should adopt the nature of a child. I, I, we should really activate that particular uh, nature, which we used to show in, in, in our early childhood days. You can you can observe maybe some of us already having uh, grand sons, granddaughters, the, 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 how they are. 
they are really asking lot of questions or else you can ask your mother uh, or uh, sister how i used to be when i was in my childhood days they would uh, definitely say this you were just notorious used to ask many questions correct why 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 how why and how questions correct but we never had that fear of what error or what would happen if uh, you know you ask this question that's what we call that a zero error culture and they used to learn to learn and uh, try again and fail uh, and then from that failure they used to learn and that is what should actually get activated in, in, in us or help the students to get activated this particular quality when they go in search of the challenges correct over the years many of us have forgotten this ability to explore this we need to reactivate it really we need to reactivate it among our students so that the kind of uh, quality of uh, challenges they capture would be very sensible so it's another way around it's like uh, we should really get on to the environment as if as if a alien has come from the outer space and would get the doubts like this like why people throw plastic into oceans work during day and sleep at night as if and we don't know so totally i would say shift to delete you should take out all your assumptions presumptions all that and remove it from your mind before you really go and observe the society for or the environment for the design challenges right so ultimately this is the entire process of identifying the challenges students need to focus on two things one is it is they, they are driven by curiosity so we are curious we are open ask why plus how questions continuously and change their perspective in order to look at things from various sides that's what i said side view front view top view you look it from all the angles and capture the truth driven by curiosity focused on people the ultimate thing driven by curiosity and focused on people is ultimately what should happen right now i would like you all to do a small exercise take up a small exercise can you have uh, take your pen and paper for a moment and then work on this and share your views in the chat box so what this example is all about we are now seeing a uh, people standing in a queue it's uh, taken from one of the hospitals right imagine that we are there to identify observe initial observations because i am not engaged i have not immersed myself but i am trying to imagine their pain points through observation by looking at them the kind of behavior they are showing the kind of discussion they are having among themselves right and the kind of a, the uh, uneasiness they are showing through their body language i am going to capture something what is that i need to capture is i need to understand the mental status of the patients or otherwise need not be the people who are standing in the queue all the time need not be patient the people who are standing in the queue at the hospital i am trying to understand their mental status right so what i should do i should really jot down the possible pain points i said no it is through observation observation of what the kind of uneasiness they are showing through their body language observe when when they they, they really speak to the other person or the kind of uh, uh, moments they show behavior they may depending upon that i would conclude something or i would really understand their pain points see again i request you not to write the solution please do not become judgmental i want you to only jot down the pain possible pain points of these people can you do that because we are all we all have experienced we know what would happen in the hospital when people are really standing in this particular situation so next 5 minutes let us hold down right 
please take out a pen and a paper and then write down all possible you know the uh, pain points jot it down and put it in the chat box please start let us take next five minutes for this particular activity
yeah coming back again <clears throat> so really the nice uh, uh, observations been made so really uh, compliments to all the uh, members here but i could go through the, the, the list uh, there i can find that everything now if i consolidate all the points which you have written like the lexa penning and the Okay, just see, am I audible? Hello? Uh, yes, audible. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So now, uh, if I consolidate all the uh, you know, observations made by the uh, participants here, so it boils down to anxiety. Every person in the queue has got one or the other, you know, things to worry about. They may, somebody may be worrying about the uh, final, the illness, somebody may be worrying about the uh, uncertainties so if i just make and consolidate and say that is anxiety so through this observation can i consolidate or uh, come to a conclusion that how do i how do i you know help these people to reduce the anxiety that is developed that can be my challenge all of you agree that this can be the challenge which i can pick up to work on and that's how the identifying the design challenge the process would start it's through observation i have not engaged myself i have not immersed to understand the you know pain points at the micro level or greater depth through observation i have done it what is the observation one simple thing what i looked is the people huge crowd is there standing in the queue to get the registration done at the hospital so like this the plenty of uh, situations come across uh, day to day life wherein we can really observe and pick up the most crucial area where our intervention is required right that's how you believe it or not the people are working now see now if some some enterprising uh, enterprises you know look at this they would definitely come out with the app for that hospital and then tell them that before coming to the hospital they can just log on to the app and then check whether they can register it online and come and directly get the get the you know treatment or the uh, consultation problem is solved yes that's how they are understanding the pain points of the people and that's what we need to really make our students to go through this particular process right so really, uh, I, my compliments to all the faculty members here who have really tried or understood the process of getting into the pain points. I really appreciate here. Why? Because many of you did not get into the solution. That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful transformation that has happened. I'm happy. Why? Because none of you are really talked about the solution you all talked about their pain points that is that means you are unbiased right correct you are, you are not thinking to provide the solution because i know this this what would work we are moved out of that understanding and we are really able to understand the pain points of the people and write it down this is the good thing